readers, I'm Amy and I'm your nonfiction feminist. I got a lot done in July. I already made this video and it was trying to upload for 24 hours and it didn't happen so I am reshooting it in two parts. Technical difficulties, what are you gonna do? So let's get started. I have so much to tell you all about. I have not posted in the last two-ish weeks with working on the reading rush. I really just didn't want to put the stress of a video on myself. So we will get started with reading rush things. First prompt was to read a book with purple on the cover. Um, as you may know from my TBR video, which I will link down below where you were introduced to my cats, I was supposed to read The Eternal Husband and Other Stories by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I also realized, interestingly enough, they misspelled his last name on the cover. I've never seen anyone do this before. That's a huge mistake. All right. Uh, anyways, I did not read this book. I got maybe halfway through the first story whenever I looked it up on Wikipedia because I felt like I was missing a message of some sort, and I was. So ends up with it being a readathon, I just did not have the time to dedicate to this book that I think I would need in order to get the most out of it. So instead I ended up listening to Ellen Hopkins' Glass, which I read a lot of Ellen Hopkins and I will talk more about that in part two with the audiobooks. Um, I love Ellen Hopkins' narrator. I don't remember her name, I will put it on the screen. Glass is the second book in the Crank duology, which also has like a sequel duology. So you have uh, Kristen, I think her name was. I read a lot of books this month. And she also goes by Brie, who's kind of her alternate personality. Not that she has a split personality, but Brie is the part of her that's more outgoing, that's more daring, that's more sexual. And Kristen is just kind of not super confident, doesn't really put herself out there. And she goes to visit her dad one summer who's really into drugs and doing meth and stuff. And she ends up getting addicted to meth. And Crank is kind of her beginning to get hooked. And then Glass focuses on her having her child and her continuation with the addiction and it's the whole duology is like one boy after another that she falls in love with because she's a teenager that's what teenagers do they fall in love like that uh yeah this was really intense um i mean drugs addiction how can it not be intense but i really enjoyed it glass is what i read for the purple cover yes um, the second prompt was to read a book in the same spot. That was also supposed to be The Eternal Husband and other stories because I thought I would read it in kind of parts. And what I ended up doing was, I don't have my copy because I just lent it out to a friend, but I read The Fifty Shames of Earl Grey by Fanny Merkin, aka Andrew Schaefer. This book was hilarious and a really in your face way. Um, I ended up reading this whole book at my desk at work. I also did not do a reading vlog for the readathon because it is super illegal for me to film in my workplace. So, but that's fine. People don't watch my vlogs all that much anyways. Anyhow, Fifty Shames of Earl Grey. While it is a play on Fifty Shades of Grey, as we all know, Fifty Shades of Grey is fan fiction for Twilight, so there were a lot of Twilight jokes in this. The guy's all like, hi, I'm Edward Cullen. <clears throat> I mean, Earl Grey. <laughs> it was so funny. It was kind of like a National Lampoon sort of a thing, or like one of those movies that makes fun of other movies. Like, that's how in your face this book was. I really enjoyed it. I have so many friends that I need to loan this book out to because I think they're all gonna love it. Third prompt, a book that I meant to read last year that was Midwives by Chris Bojalian. Midwives was a book, it took place in, takes place in like the 1970s, I think, 1960s, 1970s-ish, and you have a woman who doesn't have any medical training, but 
She ends up becoming a midwife for all these women in her community. And at one point, she's trying to help a woman give birth, and it's going for hours and hours and hours, and this woman is straining so hard. And she thinks that what happens is that the woman ends up having an aneurysm. It appears that she has died. In order to save the baby, she does a C-section. They are snowed in. There is no phone line connections because of the blizzard. They can't get an ambulance there. They can't take her to the hospital. So she's doing the C-section. But in the autopsy on the woman ends up, it appears that the woman died from blood loss from the C-section, not from an aneurysm. And there's a court case and just going into attacks on midwifery and to this big fight between doctors and hospitals and midwives. This is still an ongoing fight today. It's been a fight for a while since doctors and hospitals became more common. Yeah. I... Uh, this book was okay. Like, it wasn't bad. It wasn't my favorite. For whatever reason, I didn't feel particularly connected to the narrative. It could be that I was trying to speed through it because readathons. But it's decent. You know, it's about midwives. Um, the only reason that I picked up this book, because clearly the cover is not like super interesting, was because of the title. Because I find midwives really, really interesting. I did a women and gender studies minor in college. Like, this is my jam. Um, yeah, it was fine. The fourth prompt was to read an author's first book. I did not do this. Um, most of my author's first books on my shelves I've read before, or I've read multiple times before. I didn't feel like reading them again. Uh, prompt five is a non-human main character. This was supposed to be Dracula, which is gonna be a reread because I love Dracula and I have like a ton of copies of it because I'm that person. Did not get around to this. I will talk more about why I didn't read as many books whenever I'm through with the list. The next prompt was five or more words in the title. That was Fifty Shames of Earl Grey. And book to movie adaptation. For that, I did Dolores Claiborne by Stephen King. And I watched the movie. The book was fine. It's all a monologue. Like, no page breaks, no chapters, nothing. Towards the end of this book, you do actually find a connection between Dolores Claiborne and um, Gerald's game. And this takes place during the eclipse. And the eclipse happens at the same time as Gerald's game as well. So that's kind of the connection between the two, if you are curious. It was all right. It was a drama about a woman who killed her husband, but no one could ever really prove it. And currently the woman that she is watching out for. She's kind of a home health care person for her. She used to clean her house, now she's doing personal care. The woman died and everyone thinks that Dolores Claiborne did it and most people think that she killed her husband as well, though it was never proven. And they are trying to figure out if she killed the woman that she cares for. And it goes into her previous family life with her daughter and her two sons how they were influenced by their father, who is an alcoholic and abusive, until she decides to fight back. And that moment that she decides to fight back is what changes everything, what really gets the story going. This, I think a lot of the reason I didn't love this was because it wasn't what I was really expecting. It's, I mean, there's some abuse in it and there's murder and stuff, but it just didn't feel as horrific as a lot of his books are. Not that he is just a horror author. He writes across many, many genres. This book just wasn't really what I was expecting it to be. And I honestly, I loved the movie. It has Kathy Bates and Jennifer Jason Leigh. They do phenomenal in their acting. The movie is a really, really great representation of the book. And ultimately, I feel like the story did better as a movie than as a book. But I also don't read... I, I read some dark stuff, especially lately. I am in a creep mood. I read some contemporaries and some mysteries and stuff. But drama, in my opinion, seems to fit better to the screen than it does to books. Particularly this book, I just feel that it did much better as a movie for me. Highly recommend watching the movie. Again, the movie was fantastic. Just, I loved it. 
This is a situation I think the movie was better than the book. Alright, The Reading Rush. This is the second readathon that I've done. The first one was Nicole from Beautiful Chaos of Books. She did the Mental Healthathon, which that took place over an entire month. It had 15 prompts. I didn't feel the need to do all 15 prompts and that was fine. But The Reading Rush taking place over one single week, I didn't love it. And that's a very personal feeling. I just don't really love the idea of readathons. I'm doing my own book challenge in September, which I debated doing a readathon for a month and ended up just turning it into a challenge thing because I don't like the high pressure feeling of it, which I know a lot of that is on me. Like no one's really pressuring me to read seven books in seven days. I only have as much pressure as I put on myself, but I am a perfectionist. I am an anxious person. I have a lot of self-inflicted pressure, so I don't love readathons. I don't like making myself read that hard. I don't want to read two to three hundred pages every single day. If I happen to read 200 pages one day and 300 pages another, awesome. But I, I feel like I was forcing myself to read that much and it just wasn't very comfortable for me. Uh, Glass was a little bit different because it was an audiobook. I can rush myself through audiobooks and be fine. But physical reading, I just, I don't like the pressure of it. It took a lot of the joy of reading out of the experience for me and was starting to put me in a slump. So halfway through the week I ended up moving on to my Sci-Fi July challenge to finish that off. Yeah, personal, personal opinion. Not super into readathons. Not that I'm never going to do one again. I am. I also need to work on not putting so much pressure on myself. But yeah, so that's my readathon conversation. I'm going to talk about my Sci-Fi July challenge next and then I will go back to the Stephen King stuff because I have a couple more Stephen King books that I did for this month. Sci-Fi July is part of the Devour Your TBR challenge on Goodreads that I'm taking part in this year where they have a challenge every single month. Sci-Fi July, of course, is focusing on sci-fi books, and it reminded me, once again, that I really need to read more sci-fi because I love it. It's not a huge presence on my bookshelves, but I always love it whenever I try it, so I really wish that I took more time to read it. So I started off with The Martian. I loved this. This is one of my new favorite favorite favorites. Uh, I think they did a really awesome job on the movie. I saw the movie last year, maybe? And I think they did a phenomenal job on the movie. I think Andy Weir did a phenomenal job on the book. So this takes place in like 2030 something or 2040 something, I think. And these astronauts go to Mars. There's a big storm. They have to leave early. He gets knocked out and whenever he wakes up they've already left because they didn't really have a choice. And he is stranded on Mars for a couple of years, I think it's like four Martian years, and there's an extra half hour of time every day on Mars compared to Earth. But you're just going with him on his journey of survival on Mars. He is a botanist, so he takes like some dirt samples from Earth and adds them to the Mars dirt samples since Mars can't grow anything and like tries to get this bacteria going that's in the dirt so he can grow plants and try and make his food stretch and he's also trained in mechanical engineering so he's trying to do upkeep on all of the Mars equipment and taking it apart and putting other stuff back together kind of making new things to help him have an easier time while living on Mars and then you go back to Earth where they are trying to figure out how to save him. It was awesome. The character had an amazing sense of humor for the situation that he was in, so clearly humor is his coping skill. I love humor as a coping skill. I think it is one of the best coping skills. I highly, highly recommend this to anyone trying to get into sci-fi, who any, with anyone who wants an easier read for sci-fi. There is some drier stuff in this. He goes a lot into like some of the science of things and that can get a little dry, but it's not like paragraphs upon paragraphs of here's a bunch of science stuff thrown at you. It's kind of chopped up so 
you're not even reading a whole page of dry science stuff. It's like, here's some dry science and some humor and how I'm feeling and a little more dry science. So it read really, really well. I loved this book. I would recommend it to anyone. Yes. My other sci-fi book was a reread. It was Michael Crichton's Sphere. This has been a favorite of mine for a while. I think this is the third or fourth time that I've read it. You have a psychologist named Norman. He was made to write a research paper for like the president and the what maybe FBI or the Navy or he wrote a psychology paper that he was considered the right person to write it. It's about how humans would react during an alien invasion. He thought the whole thing was a joke, but he did it anyways. He needed the work and the income. And years and years later, the Navy comes to find him and says, hey, there's a plane crash. We need you to investigate. He's investigated a lot of plane crashes before he goes. Ends up it's not a plane crash. It's a spaceship crash. And he is taken down in a submarine to this like habitat under the sea with a bunch of other people that he recommended to help him in his original paper that he wrote and they go onto the spacecraft and they find this alien orb and they're trying to find out how the craft got there how the the sphere the orb the, how the sphere was picked up what it does how to open it like what happened here what's going on what does this sphere do and weird stuff starts happening and it was really good and I like, I like the psych, there's a lot of psychological stuff going on in here because it's from the perspective of a psychologist. I feel like with horror and sci-fi and stuff there's not always a lot of psychological reactions to things, not a lot of psychological perspectives. I'd like to see that in books more. I think this book did it really really well. The first maybe half of this book is very much a slow burn so it's not gonna be for everybody. I also I had recommended Jurassic Park to a friend and he didn't love it because it was really science heavy. I like the really science heavy stuff so if you don't want to read a bunch of science this is not the sci-fi style for you. Michael Crichton goes into a lot of science in his sci-fi books. I love it. It's it's my personal taste. I thought this book was awesome and that is it for my sci-fi July readings. I only did two, but I took part, so it counts. And lastly, I'm going back to Stephen King reads that I did. Um, oh, uh, just a reminder, try a chapter tag. I did Stephen King. I will link that down below. I read the first chapter sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on page count, chapter size, and stuff, of five Stephen King books. One of them was Rose Matter. Worst Stephen King book I have ever read. Probably the worst Stephen King book I will ever read. I have a video coming out in a week or two that gives you a full review of Rose Matter. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It was horrible. And the last Stephen King book that I read, it was my third one for this month. Again, I'm really feeling the creep vibes. Apparently that meant Stephen King vibes. I do think I'm going to take a little break from him. But I read Misery. Murphy Napier was reading this this month. I really like her channel. I like what she does with it. So I figured I'd read along with Misery so I could find out her thoughts, do my own thoughts. And it was good. I didn't like the beginning of it. The first 20 pages or so just didn't do it for me. The first chapter in this book is four sentences and the first three are a bunch of like repeated letters because he's really drugged up, he can't really understand what this other person is saying, but you have, um, what's his name, Paul something, and he has been essentially kidnapped by Annie. Paul is a writer, Annie is his number one fan, which this book really makes me think, what exactly makes a number one fan? Is it someone who kidnaps you and keeps you in their house forever and always? Or is it someone who celebrates your work and doesn't kidnap you and keep you forever and always? That would be an interesting conversation. What makes a number one fan? Anyways, um, 
Yeah, first 20 pages of this or so, he's basically really drugged, doesn't understand anything that's going on, so it's kind of hard to get into and to read because there's nothing like solid, but it gets really good. He's finding out who Annie is, um, she's a little off mentally, he's trying to kind of learn how to work his way around her personality, she is very abusive towards him, she's got a temper. I also read the movie when I was done reading this book. I didn't love it. Kathy Bates was in it, again. She was, once again, very very awesome in this role, but the movie just wasn't as good of an adaptation as Dolores Claiborne. It left out a lot of stuff, a lot, especially a lot of the more abusive stuff in this book was left out, and I think that really took a lot away from the movie and a lot of, away from, like, just how harrowing the situation is. Didn't really get that in the movie, so I do think the book is much better. And yeah, he's just trying to survive. So essentially there's not really a ton of stuff that goes on in this book. It's more psychology and dialogue heavy, but being Stephen King, he did it very, very well. That is also why I like Gerald's Game a lot. It's one of my favorite Stephen King books because not everyone can write with such a limited character count and make it interesting. Gerald's Game revolves around one character for this whole big book, and he did really well with it. Misery revolves around two characters for this whole book. He did a really good job. So those are half of my July reads. I will see you in my part two video where I talk about the rest of my July reads, because technical difficulties. See you in the next one.